Hi everybody, so this is a supercapacitor. It's an amazing invention actually and people will tell you it has a serious drawback and that is it can't hold a lot of energy and although that's very true it has a serious advantage that means that that is now becoming indispensable. And what it is is that this can take an enormous whack of energy and then feed it back out. It's the electronic equivalent of a sponge. It can really just suck that energy in and then feed it gently back out again. Now if you have something like a wind turbine and you get a gust then it's going to produce a hell of a lot and if you try to put that straight into your batteries well you're just going to blow everything up. Stick this in between them and what it'll do is even everything out and so of course you can use more of that gust wind because you know you're not going to blow everything to pieces and that is an awesome thing but of course that's at the electronic end when the generators produced everything wouldn't it be great if there was something mechanical that we could stick at the mechanical end to help even things out a little bit as well oh if only there was something of course there is you know, it's my friend Corwin Whitehorse who pointed this out to me. He pointed out the Huygens mechanism. Now, it's a mechanism taken from clocks, and it's used to maintain the power output when you do something like wind it up. So if you're winding up a clock, you're introducing an awful lot of power, and it can mess with clocks. When they were thinking about this, Huygens came up with this mechanism in order to reduce that effect. So you can wind it but it won't affect the output. And of course, that is absolutely fascinating because another friend of mine, Vibe77 guy, was saying, Rob, that Contenescu uh, torque converter that we looked at, it goes from one end to the output. How about if it went to the other? And in discussion in the comments, we thought about using this mechanism to do exactly that job. So, of course, what I did was went to Tinkercad and designed this and then promptly printed it all out and here it is. Incidentally, these are the chain links and I perhaps went a bit crazy on that. I uh, printed 300 of them and clipped them together so it's ridiculously long chain but those are the chain links. Here are the weights. I've made the weights as hollow cups so we can put ball bearings or whatever in there and then screw a cap on. And that's going to be my big weight. And then, of course, we've got a little weight where we can put less ball bearings in. I need to be able to put a cog on those. So I've got this that glues onto there. Now, I could have printed that cap and that piece as one piece, but it would have needed support. So I printed it in two pieces and we'll glue it on there. Then we've got a tiny little cog that goes around the chain so that we can actually hang that on. That'll go in there. And we repeat that with the smaller one and the top end. What we need is a large cog and a ratchet mechanism. So let's put all of that together. Okay, there are the basic components put together. It's really easy. Okay, so there's our long weight. And of course, we can adjust this weight now by adding steel ball bearings or rocks or sand or whatever you want, really, just to tune it up a little bit. And it's got that cog free to swivel on the top between two bearings. And the other one's identical but smaller. So those are the two weights that we're going to use to run this machine. And then there's actually the machine head. Now, what the machine head has done is decouple the input from the output because it now passes through these two gears some weights in order to work. So the wind turbine or whatever your energy input is will go on that one there. That can only turn in that direction because of the ratchet. It can't turn counterclockwise because the ratchet is there stopping it. This ratchet is just resting by gravity. No doubt it would be better we put a spring on there to actively keep it in place. But at the moment gravity is just fine and we can turn it only one way. Of course that is not connected to this bit except through that cog there. So the chain wraps around here and the two falling weights will drive that and that of course is our output and here we'd put something like the generator. This decoupling of input and output through the weight mechanism is what makes this act like a mechanical capacitor. Now of course we've got this huge weight of chain. This chain incidentally uh, is just separate links that clip together and the chain runs around these components here. We'll run it between there so that it'll rest on that bottom cog like that. Now I have seen people using string with this but chain engages better and won't slip. Then what we do is we take the loop of chain down here 
Now what's going to happen here is that it will pass on that there and that will be hung on there. After it's gone there, it comes back over the top section right there and then feeds back down so that it's like that. And then the second weight gets fed with the chain, with the chain passing under the cog. There it is, that is the Huygens mechanism. Now it won't work yet because I haven't put enough weight in this weight here. This weight, when it has enough weight, will only be able to pull on that side of the chain because that side, which goes over that cog, is stopped by that ratchet. So it'll pull on that side of the chain. Of course, as it pulls on that side of the chain, it will turn the output shaft. Now, as we turn the input shaft, it will go against the mechanism. This will continue to pull, but this will then rise up as a total because we've got a gear in there acting on the chain, making it rise. Now, if there's a lot of input here, the weight will rise up. There's very little input here, so it's balanced. The weight will stay the same, but the output will continue to work. And if there's less input here, the weight will continue to drop and the output will continue to work. So the input can vary, but the output will be constant within the range of the weights and the length of the chain, obviously, will be constant independent of the input. Now for something like a wind turbine where you've got it in very gusty conditions then of course that's ideal because the gust will store the energy in the weight acting like a mechanical capacitor. Okay, so I filled these two with some M8 nuts. There's 100 in here and 50 in here. And I've got my finger on the top right there to stop it turning at the moment. Because if I let go of it with my finger, it does what you'd think it would do. This way it falls, pulls on that side of the chain, which of course is pulling on that cog at the top, turns that, and remember our generator is attached to there, and so we get drive power. But the whole thing about this is it's not weight driven, it's a weight storage mechanism, not a weight drive mechanism. So on this input side, if we can have a look at that, there we go, on that input side against that ratchet, as we turn that ratchet, what it's doing is pulling that part of the chain in that direction. And obviously as it does that, the lighter weight gets lowered and the heavier weight gets raised and of course that is being actuated to pull that chain through the input part of it which is going to be the water wheel wind turbine or whatever when we get that sudden gust of wind and then of course when we've done that this will be continuing to fall so it'll only raise as long as the input is greater than that weight if the input is less of course the weight will continue to fall adding to the output and that's what smooths the whole thing out. So one of the cool things about it is when the weight's in its full top position and can't raise any further it won't affect the operation it'll just have a longer drive path that chain will continue to turn even though the weight is at the top and it is fully charged it'll still turn at the same at the faster rate at this output. When the reverse happens and the weight is at the bottom so it's in its discharge state it will also continue to turn it'll just have a longer drive path for the chain so it won't actually affect the operation of it beyond the inefficiency that the longer drive path adds. Now a longer drive path or any mechanical component you add to a system always adds inefficiency that's the way it is it's not a question of will it be more efficient or not it's the balance between the extra that you're getting by being able to store energy that you wouldn't normally be able to use and evening it out so that now as even at the output is that more than the inefficiency a longer drive path adds well we don't really know that at this stage. I'm guessing yes, but I don't honestly know, but it is certainly an interesting point. But the point of this really is that it does act as a mechanical capacitor, and it's a certainly very interesting project to be working on, and it's really an idea between um, me, Vibe Guy, and Corwin. Corwin suggested the mechanism, me and Vibe Guy were chatting about it and thought we'd try this and see how it goes. Now, of course, I have put all of these files on Thingiverse, uh, the link is in the description, should you want to try it out for yourself, and it is interesting, so it's certainly going to be something I'm going to be looking at a bit more. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.